all right this morning this afternoon we are talking about what to do when your child is not listening or not following instruction this is one of the common questions i get from parents mm -hmm. caregivers that what do i do my child is not listening my child doesn't follow instructions it's over and again i have to say this so i thought okay it's going to be a perfect discussion this morning to talk about what to do when your child is not listening just like i used to say i am not going to wait for anyone this morning we're just going to get started okay sister blessing can you hear me can you hear me sister blessing i know you're right there on facebook all right what to do thank you thank you oj one god own thank you for joining you receive money thank you for joining uh i have favor five three three thank you for joining Thank you for joining everyone today we want to talk about what to do when your child is not listening your child doesn't follow instructions is a concern and it's a worry for you and this is one of the major question i get from parents i used to say this and i'm going to say it again that you should know that children are raw material okay sometimes we we don't picture these things the way they are supposed to be they they came without any information Thank you for joining, Mrs. Amodu. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Children are raw material from God or from whosoever believe give them to you. For, for me, I believe they are gift from God anyways. So they are raw materials. See, just like you, 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 we all came naked. They came without nothing in their brain. So our duty as parent, as caregiver, as an intending parent is to teach them by imparting it's not going to be easy yes we are going to impact and this take intentionality and determination it's where you bend them to they are going to whatever you bend them to that's where they are going to learn i've had parents said to me before you know my child i've taught the child the child is not listening my child doesn't want to sit down even to babies my child is not ready to sleep in his or her cradle it is whatever you teach the child that the child is going to learn the impute determine the health field the output is not just going to be anything whatever you been built don't forget that your child your mirror and that is not even where i'm going to today your child your mirror that is not where i am going to today where i'm going to today is whatever you impute into your child you are going to definitely see the output except the child is on a spectrum even with that the input determine the output is just going to take an extra work it's going to take an extra work every child is teachable every child is teachable be it the child on the spectrum be it that that has already been diagnosed or whatever you think oh yeah you've come again my child is special yes you are blessed that's a special ability they have a special way of learning. So every child, there is no right off on any child. Your child is teachable. My children are teachable. You just have to be ready. It takes intentionality. And that's why we are always saying that whatever you impute is tiring. Yes, I know. But your intentionality is what's going to drive you, drive you all through, all through this journey. And don't forget, if you're used to this channel, by now you know that the importance of uniqueness in every child. As parents, our duty is to understand the uniqueness of every child. Child A is different from child B. So they are unique in their own ways. I cannot overemphasize this thing. Even if they are identical twins, baby A, baby B, identical, they are not the same. They are both unique in their own way. The techniques you use for A might not work for B. So for our, our duty as parent caregiver is for us to understand and to search what is the unique child? How do I go about this? And that is what I said today. Let's just talk about it. It's a common question. And today, trust me, you are going to be blessed and you're going to learn a lot. Thank you for joining everyone. Thank you for joining Facebook. Uh, thank you for joining. If you don't mind, just let us know where you're joining from. Let me know where you're joining me from. Thank you, Esther. Lolade, thank you for joining. Ayoshi Shioma. Sorry, I don't mean to murder your name. Easy test. Thank you for joining. God bless you. This is Parenting Essential from the Vision Guide. And today we are talking about 
what to do when your child is not listening or your child is not following instruction and the most important thing i've said so far if you're just if you're just joining me is we should understand the uniqueness of every child understand the uniqueness of every child and every child is a raw material your input is going to determine the output even though it's going to take extra work it's going to take strength for you from you it's going to take determination intentionality it is possible every child is teachable see until you understand this point before you understand the other things i'm going to be talking about until you and thank you pastor rachel my darling friend thank you for joining god bless you pastor so until you understand this point before you get the other point every child don't have it at the back of your head that one is very stubborn that my child is very stubborn that no it's not your child is not stubborn every child is teachable every child can be taught and uh, number one thing that you need to check if you feel your child is not listening to instruction is to ensure there is clear direction i've already i have a video on the clear direction separately but today i'm not talking just about clear direction clear direction is just a point today how do i mean is your instruction age appropriate is there clear direction before you can complain you have to check you have to check you have to check is that clear direction am i making point am i making point is my instruction clear enough can the child get my understanding is that understanding because most of the time, our voices as parents, caregivers, or teachers are background voice, background noise, background noise. We have to ensure this. Clear direction. Clear instruction. Put the cup on the table. Don't, no sarcasm, no sarcasm. Especially with a child that is struggling. I'm going to use a practical example that happened in, with my child last week. Uh, my son kept asking me for a particular phone today, and I know he had enough. He had enough. Thank you, bro, Yemi, for joining. He had enough. And he kept saying, Mommy, can I have more? Can I have more? Can I have more? You know, I got tired, and I said, go and eat everything. Eat it all. Out of sarcasm. And he just turned back. I said, okay, Mommy. Before I turned back, he finished all. I was like, What? So no sarcasm. That wasn't a clear direction. It took me for my words. Because that is who mommy is. Eat everything. He ate everything. So don't say your child is not listening. Imagine me uh, trying to chastise him for that. That was my fault. I said, eat everything. Out of sarcasm. And he did. He finished it all. Especially African parent. We are full of sarcasm. Or, you know, you are not clear enough. Mommy, where can I put the plate? Put it on my head. And if your child should put that plate on your head, you're going to be upset. Yet you complain, my child is not listening. You can drop the funny part that's happened to you before. You can drop that in the comment section. What have you said to your child out of sarcasm or whatever that you know that, oh, this is really funny. And I hope you didn't try to chastise your child for your own mistake. Clear direction. Following from Kenya, Miss uh, Miss Ella, thank you so much for joining us from Kenya. God bless you. God bless you. Clear direction and ensure that direction is age appropriate. You're talking to Miss Remy. Thank you for joining. I'm gonna read Miss Remy's point. Miss Remy said on Facebook, Instagram. This is from Facebook. Miss Remy said communication is more important. They will listen and let them talk. They will listen and let them talk what from the child's heart. Don't stop them while they are talking. Mm, that's good. Most of the time as parents, we are full of ourselves. We don't want to listen. If you cannot take time to listen to your child, it is going to be almost impossible for your child to listen to you. For every parent caregiver that is always saying, my child is not listening or following instruction or direction, there are things to check. You have to check. I said in the last two weeks that it's not about the child only. We have to take a pause and say and check. What are the things that I'm doing as parent that is not right? 
in my parenting skills what are the things that are not so right or perfect if you cannot correct them you just keep on especially those who are used to screaming and eating the child you just keep eating your child and they're just you know just shouting go out of there but you're not checking yourself i said before about our mental health as parents we cannot pass our frustration onto our children and most of the time when our children are not listening is because we most of the time pass on our frustration I've said before, and I'm going to say it again, in part of breathing, just breathe. You know you're frustrated, just breathe. Take a moment. It should be a conversation, not an argument. I'm going to that point later. If you're frustrated, take a moment, breathe. If your mental health is not stable, if your mental health is not in place, there is no way that you can correct your child. So that is why the importance of you taking care of yourself first is a must. Take care of your health. Take care of yourself before you can go ahead and ensure healthy children. Children that are amazing and listening. Age appropriate. That's the point I am at this moment. Is the instruction age appropriate? You're talking to a child of two years, five years, like you're talking to an adult. We should know how to place our words to be age appropriate. You can't talk to your child like you're talking to your husband or your sister. They are children. Especially children. Not I'm not talking about young adult or your teenagers now. Even some of your teenagers, you can't talk to them like a young adult. There are limits and boundaries to, to conversation and instructions. And if your conversation, your instruction... It's not age appropriate it is not going to be a clear direction so it's very important that whatever you're passing across to your child it is age appropriate age appropriate age appropriate instruction bring about clear direction clear direction you can drop your point as always how are the ways you have said to your parents or your kids before that you feel is not good or is the best you can drop your suggestions you can drop your point and i'm just going to read it out from facebook and instagram once again thank you for joining me if you're just joining today my name is oye oye Layo, and i am your parenting coach and this is coming to you from the vision guide so drop whatever you think okay my child is not listening where are the areas you feel your child is not listening to instruction or direction or what do you feel is the problem what do you feel are the challenges why do you think your child is not listening but don't forget check yourself first your mental health clear direction these are raw materials i can't i don't know no, no parents you say i've tried my child is not listening keep trying that's our job that's your job as a mother and a father that's your job as a caregiver that's your job as a teacher don't give up keep trying keep pushing keep pushing and don't stop it might be difficult but i promise you there is light behind that tunnel you can't just afford to give up on any child you can't afford to give up on any of your child because surely the result will come result will come i'll just go to my next point get your child's attention ensure your voice is not background noise I mentioned that before and I'm just going to say that in detail now a child for example uh, uh, early years from let's say one year to five years or six years they're about the playing in the playroom with toys or with friends and you're talking to the child afar for example let me adopt a name Moses Moses clear up or come and come and eat come and have your snack you can't see the child the child is from a far away maybe like few a few meters far away from you no eye contact and you are upset that your child is not listening it's not the child's fault voice and uh, fault your child your voice at that moment is just a background noise mommy's saying something but i don't know what as far as the child is concerned at that moment the toys are important and it's no more See, we have to understand what are the things that are normal for children before we go out of bust or we, we weigh down ourselves that we are not doing our best as parents or you are labeling your child already that is not listening. Most of the time, if a child is not following the instruction, 
our voices as parents might be just background noise. Can't you listen to me? I'm talking to you, my dear. The child is not hearing you. The interest at that moment is those toys, those trucks, or the books, or whatever is your child's interest. At that moment, all you need to do is to pause, move close to the child, squat, go on the child's level, and give eye contact. Mommy's talking to you. Make sure you have eye contact and say, it is time to clean up because you have your snack now. Even with that, it will take a moment for the child to agree. But make sure you come soft and make sure you get the child's attention. Not, spe not speaking behind the child's head. Not speaking while you're standing and the child is just down there playing. Go down. If it take you to sit with your child on the floor and give an high contact. Mommy is speaking right now. It is time to clean up and have lunch. It is very important for you to know that your child, your voice is not a background noise to your child at that particular time that you feel your child is not listening. Is anyone here getting the point? If you're getting the point, let me know. If you have any point to drop for me, go ahead and I will read it out. And these are common mistakes, I tell you. We don't know those things. Okay, well done, Miss Remy. That's just been pinned. Well done. TV distraction is major. How can you cope? Okay. See, about TV distraction, most of the time, it's also our fault as parent. Because we don't have boundaries. If your child is the, is the type that get lost, like get distracted with television screen, you have to be careful of uh, the screen syndrome. Because it can cause a syndrome also. So what you do in that situation is to ensure there is screen time. There is screen time and discuss it with that child. Even if that child is two, three, four, five, six years. There is need for you to have a discussion that is going to be eyeball to eyeball. Full eye contact. I am giving you the screen right now. When it's time to stop, we stop. Don't say it and you're by the side. Ensure the child is looking at you. If the screen time is over, mommy or daddy will switch off the TV. Do you understand? If the screen, when the screen time is over, the TV will be switched off. And you know that your child is distracted with screen. When it's screen time, please don't give instruction. Leave the child to enjoy the time. It is the child's screen time. Don't be distracted. Don't distract the child. This is going to make me, uh, this make me remember what happened yesterday. It's not the, the same as scenario, but there's a similar thing that you can get from her, there. My daughter is used to giving me, telling me everything she wants to do. You know, I get overwhelmed. I get tired. Like, mommy, I want to go and drink water. Mommy, I'm going to the toilet. You know, sometimes I feel like you don't need permission to go to the toilet. I've said it over and again, but she wouldn't, still wouldn't stop. So something happened yesterday or there about, and she said, mommy, I'm going to the washroom. I said, go ahead and go, you know. Then one minute after, I have forgotten she said that, and I needed her. Then I started shouting her name. And the brother said, mommy, she's in the washroom. You know what, <laughs> what dropped into my heart? Oh, I always tell her not to tell me she's going to the washroom. That means I've always been doing this. That's why she won't stop. She already told me, mommy, I'm going to the washroom. But I, you know, I was busy in the kitchen. Then it escaped my mind. I needed her to do something for me. Then I said, I called her name again. The brother was telling me she's in the washroom. Then immediately I felt the guilt. Oh, I check myself every time as parent. To be an outstanding parent. To be a vision carrier parent. To be intentional in your positive parenting. There must be daily self-check. Take it. This is right, yes. This is not right yet. If you are not checking yourself and you're just looking at your child's fault, it is very difficult for you to be intentional in your parenting. Then it done on me. Yeah, that's why she's always telling me she's going to the washroom anyways. Because I will call her. Have I been doing this for a long time? I didn't see that aspect of my life. 
I just got to know that yesterday. Then I appreciate. Then I appreciated the fact that she would tell me before she goes to the washroom. I asked her to stop, but she didn't. Then I saw myself. You know, when you see yourself in the mirror, who, who are you, mom? She said it, but you see where you still calling me. So there is need for you to check yourself every time. If it is screen time, let the child know. Don't just make a let that way we have routines and boundaries in intentional parenting, in positive parenting, in vision career parent. Boundaries, routines are very important. Let the child and I tell my it, it's screen time now. I'll tell them the time. Screen time is going to over be over this time, but I will try as much as possible not to interrupt. Let them enjoy it. I won't give them instructions. I won't give them everything. Because they might not even get me on time. But when the screen time is over, let them know screen time is over and switch it off. Even if you take your child that is already addicted to screen to cry, with time, the child will stop crying. Don't forget it's okay to cry. Don't tell your child not to cry. Crying is an expression of self-feeling. The child is expressing the way he or she feels. So it's okay to cry. Tell your child, it's okay to cry, sweetheart. But when it's time to stop, when it's screen time over, there's nothing we can do about it. Surely you're going to have another screen time. But most of us as parents, we don't, we cannot see our, we cannot stand our kids crying. They know us. They can press the button. They know our weak points. We can't stand them crying. Oh, but she's crying. Hello. It's okay. If that child doesn't cry, they will, she won't be released to you in the hospital. If that your boy, your cute boy doesn't cry. Crying is a, is a sign of living. I'm alive. I'm alive. I have feelings. I'm thinking. My brain is working. This is how I feel at this moment. I am not happy about it, which is okay. Even as parent, I thought and... I'm alone in this washroom thing. Oh, okay, okay, Miss Ella, I'm, te I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Yeah. We are not alone. We are in this together. So crying, it's okay. But we do, you can't stand your child crying. Oh, my child is crying. Hello, mommy. I've seen parents crying along with the child before. As a teacher. It's the first day of school. It's okay. The child is crying. Your job as parent is to encourage the child and to reassure your child that your child is coming. But mommy, we always come back. I won't leave you here. Instead of child, instead of the mom encouraging the child and giving a reassurance that we always come back, the mom is crying. <laughs> I have to be petting the mom again. Don't do this. Your child is here. So a whole lot of time is our fault, not the child's fault. So we have to work on ourselves. We just have to work on ourselves. Let me go, go on to the next point. I was, I was talking about eye contact. Uh, we have to increase the quality of our inst uh, communication. Most of the time, there is, no, there is no strength in our words. I've explained over and again the importance of being your child's friend and still being an authority. So in... Making your child to follow instructions and direction, we have to improve, we have to increase, we have to work on the quality of our communication. How do I mean? Your words must be gold and not garbage. Mean what you say and say what you mean. You have to mean what you say and say what you mean. If your child have uh, discovered that mommy we just said but she won't go through with it your words are already garbage your words are already garbage you can't give an empty threat to your child the quality of your communication must be must be good mean what you say say what you mean see whatever you cannot do Whatsoever you cannot uh, correct your child with, don't give it. Don't say it. I am going to lock you up if you don't listen. I won't give you lunch if you don't listen. If you cannot do it, never use it as threat. Whatsoever you cannot carry out as parent, never give an empty threat. You have to mean what you say and say what you mean. 
that is us increasing the quality of our communication. Is your word good today or garbage? Most of the time I get this question, oh yeah, why is my child not listening until the tenth time and I raise my voice? If I call the child, the child won't respond. If I call my child until I shout and I scream, maybe the tenth time, that is when my child is going to listen. This is what I tell people. What did you do different at the tenth time? Your word is already garbage and not gold. The first time your child said to you, mm, she doesn't mean it. She will still call me again. She will call me again. Second time, she will say it again. She's, she's, still, she's not serious. Mommy is still joking. She, until she shouts. She's, it's, already, it's a pattern. It's what, you have, it's what the child is used to. So what you need to do to correct that error is to bring the last thing to the first, to the beginning. Uh, oh, 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 Pala is calling on this phone. They won't hear me again. Instagram, they, a call came in. Please let me know if it's... Question on Instagram, I can't see it, my dear. I've already answered one. Let me know if you can still hear me because a call came on this call uh, on the phone I'm with Instagram. Instagram, let me know if you can see audible. If not, I'm going to go off and come again. So, mean what you say and say what you mean. Okay, very good, very good, thank you. Mean what you say and say what you mean. Quality communication, let your word be good. Whatever you say, make sure that you can go through with it. Make sure that you can go through with it. That is when we can increase the quality of our communication. Your child is listening at the 10th time. Whatever you're doing at that 10th time, bring it to the first. Change the routine. Let your child know mommy is not joking. Mommy is serious right now. But if you wait, you are used to calling your child 10 times. The child will never listen. Call your child once. And your child will follow the instruction. And your child will know that these words are gold. They are not trash. They are not garbage. Mommy is serious this time. Daddy is serious this time. Very serious. So it's very important for you. My child is not listening. My child doesn't follow instruction. Thank you, thank you. OJ Wern God's own. Thank you very much. So those are the things you need to check. Check, check, check. Is this okay? Is this right? Am I doing the right way? Am I what's gold or garbage? Is my voice a background noise when I'm giving the instruction? Is my instruction clear? Is it clear? There's something, see. There's something also that happened in the past with my daughter. I realized I was calling, and this is very important, and this is one of the things that we can overlook. Blackmailing with children is not a solution, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was, anytime I call her, I realized she doesn't respond anymore. It's, it's, I became like, what happened? When did you become like this? So that you have to listen one time. And I'll call her again and again, she was not responding. I became worried. I was trying to find out what was the problem. What, what went wrong? What did I do wrong? If I call her, I have to call her like five times before she will respond. And that is not the pattern in our home. But I was not, I was not in a hurry to conclude what the problem could be. I was trying to find out. And I was doing it prayerfully. You know, for me, I don't oversize. I can oversize the, the importance of God in my own parenting. I don't know if you believe God. But for me... I cannot oversight God at the center of the hall. So, but what am I going today? I was like, why is she not responding? And it got a day. I cleaned her ears. There is no wax. So there was a day. I don't know why. I said, come. And I check her ears. I was shocked. The wax there, it's already strong. There was no single O for her to hear. Imagine me, I've been beating her and telling her you are not listening. I call you five times. So this is why we have to be sensitive. 
sensitivity is key in parenting you can't just conclude that is why we can't pass our aggression or frustration on to our children the worst i'm talking about is not what we, we could do at home we had to take her to the hospital the doctor had to get it out it was totally blocked <laughs> parenting is not a joke it's a personal it must be intentional it must be with vision it must be with purpose it must be with strength it felt like what if i've been beaten now i'm the type that would just jump into beating and conclude on my child is not listening i waited and i checked and thank god for the holy spirit i realized that he was not hearing nothing this wax was strong thick the hair her hair was blocked blocked even it took the doctor extra effort the doctor couldn't get it in one day they had to do some procedure she had to be at the hospital bed and i said my god my god so ensure you always check if your child is not listening it can be wax don't always conclude that and I'm, I'm talking boy he or she refused to turn back to look at me why not think for the child what if my child is not even getting my point the moment this wax came out of her hair she like she can even hear a drop of pin drop i felt i felt sorry for her so this can happen to any child that's why i see this is parenting essential is not it's not about saying i know all it's about being practical share my experience come here share your experience and let's learn together if this can happen to my child it can also happen to your child so any child's ear can be blocked with wax at any point so these are the things you need to check first to ensure especially when it's becoming you know that this is not normal anymore ensure there is no wax in your child's ear i'm sure the time is up yes it's already over 30 minutes oh ah oh, sensitivity is key yes sensitivity is key we have to be sensitive i hope i don't have any question that i mix out miss out in uh on facebook i am going to i okay i'm going to be stopping now but please know that sensitivity is key if my child couldn't hear because of wax it can happen to your child so don't jump into conclusion don't just be the type that kick that eat your child and scream ensure is your direction clear that should be the first thing on your mind is am i giving a clear direction i did i understand the uniqueness of this child am i giving is my voice a background noise is this direction age appropriate am i allowing my child to enjoy the screen time or i'm just bumping into the screen time that i've given my child I hope there is no wax blocking my child's ear. Be sensitive. Check these things. Mark them. After you have done all these things and you see that everything is cleared and your child is not yet listening, no wax, nothing, your direction is clear, your direction is age appropriate, your voice is not a background noise then at this point you need help you need to get help from a specialist to evaluate your child most of the time as parents if this is a decision that is very difficult for us to take we feel oh i'm positive yes you're positive the fact that you're positive about your parenting is the fact that you have to be proactive be be in a hurry don't forget <laughs> That every day count in the life of a special child. The delay might be an hero. Don't wait. Every extra day can cause a big damage. How do you handle a strong willed child? This is from Instagram. How do you handle a strong willed child? Madam, congratulations. Because it is good for a child to have a strong will. I said something before instead of us dwelling on our child's weakness 
from Facebook, that question is coming from Instagram. Instead of dwelling on our child's weakness, why not embrace the, the strength of the child? Do you know that your child's weakness can be used as strength if you take positive advantage of it? If your child have a strong will, you should be glad because your child will not be easily influenced outside. You are thinking you are not getting my point. He or she will not listen to instruction except what she is going to do. Yes. That is where communication must be key. Let your child sit down. Reason along with your child and let your child reason along with you. Those are, those are genius. They, they are great kids. It's not a problem. It's a great advantage. Your child will stand out in the midst of crowd and say, this is what. This is what I want to do. You can't influence me negatively. This is what is right. So as a parent or caregiver or intended parent or a teacher, you have a lot of work to do to be able to model, to be able to build, to be able to allow, let your child reason with you with a lot of communication. You also need to do a lot of listening for a strong-willed child. Let the child speak. Don't interrupt the child when the child is talking. Sit down and listen. When the child is done, let the child now listen to you. Train the child to listen to you and evaluate. Do you know that if you do this, see, most of the time, what we give, especially African parents, even Asians, I've seen that with Asian parents, what we are imposing on our children is not because it's good for them, but because of yourself. Selfish interest. You have to, with a strong-willed child, you have to ensure it's not about your selfish interest. Is this good for the child? Is this going to be a positive advantage for the child? Don't just impose. Don't just give instruction. Let the child understand the advantage and the benefit of that instruction. I said it in one of my videos. Allow your, give choices to your children. And ensure that the choices you are giving to your children are both good. The two choices, give only two. They are both good with you. For example, for a strong-willed child, you're going out and your child is saying, I don't want to go. One, let your child understand that you are going out for a purpose and this is what you're going to do. And if your child is, I'll come back, I'll come and read that. Let me say this, let me finish it. I don't want to miss this line. If your child is still insisting, I will not go with you. I'm not going with you, daddy your mommy. So you give two choices. Would you want me to carry you to the car? Or you want to walk on your feet. Don't forget, if you carry the child, the child will still be in the car. If the child is walking on his own feet, the child will still get to the car. That is after you have explained to that child, this is what we are going to do. And this is why we are going. See, the old school way that we were brought up, we cannot work in this generation. We were not allowed to ask why. We are not allowed to contribute when our parents or aunties are talking. We are not allowed to say our view. We always shut up. It doesn't work anymore. Children of these days, this generation, want to know why. They want to understand. Don't just say, come here, sit down. Why, mommy? Let them know why they need to sit down. Give them choices on breakfast, on lunch, Some, not every time, but sometimes. What cereal do you want to have? Do you want to have cereals or chocolate flakes or something? Let them have the sense of I can decide. What color of socks do you want to wear? A skirt or a dress? Don't forget the two choices you are giving is okay by you. Give choices that are okay. It helps the strong willed child to grow. It helps them to grow. Uh, Oloriti Money said something. How do you handle a child that is so outspoken that people outside your home feel she is so for she's too forward? How do you put a margin between when a child is it, between uh, its weakness and the strength? Okay, that's a big, big, big one. Your child is uh, and the time is far spent. I wish we can continue this next week. Oh, we have used eleven minute extra time. Uh, is that okay with you everyone? Can I just answer this question? 11 minutes extra time already. Your child is outspoken and the people outside think your child is too forward. 
See, I think this is just me growing up. Ah, uh, my mom still tell my daughter you don't tell an adult why. Oh, my sweetheart, if you want to raise a child that don't, you don't want your child to ask you why. That means you are not ready to raise giants in future. You are not ready to raise future leaders. If you are raising a future leader, a giant, a personality, a voice, allow your child to ask you why, not to be rude. I made a video talking about you understanding a child being rude and a child being smart or using a strength. A clever child and a rude child. The most sensitive thing about it is just a thin line between them. A thin line between being clever and being smart. Uh, being rude and being smart. Very thin. It takes extra sensitivity. It takes extra understanding in parenting to be able to differentiate if your child is rude and your child is smart. Most of the time, smart kids are, vic are victim of this. They are just smart. They are just smart. They are not rude. Growing up, I've been short. I can't forget this. These memories are so fresh in my memories. Not even by my parents, by aunties, by neighbors. Because I want to contribute. And the truth is that my contribution is the solution. But they are adults. They will say, Benodaka, keep quiet. Most of the time, I'll just be in my cocoon and just ask, what have I done wrong? I just want to say my view. I tell my kids, this is the way I go about it with my own experience with my children. I teach them how to mind their business. See, minding our business is key. Your child is smart and spoken, but let your child have boundaries. When you are outside and adults are talking sometimes, if it's not your business, learn to mind your business. I'm teaching my children, I'm teaching my children the importance of learning to be self-control and how to mind your business. Especially if it's not your business and they are not in danger. It is very important also. However, don't shut your child and let your child be in. In this our cocoon and not being fulfilled. It is very sensitive. I think we, I'm going to take this topic separately. This is very sensitive. I need to share some scenarios and some ways you can handle this. Because the thin line between being smart and being rude is, is almost not visible. Because I've seen parents online, you know, they are posting their rude children to be smart. And it's a pity. A child is talking to you and oh, oh, they are laughing and just making video. Mommy, can you shut up right down? Oh my God. And they are smart. They are happy. My child is confident. Oh, you are a failure. And you will not be a failure. You that you are with me right now. Such a parent is a failure. Mom, can you come right here? And shut up right now and everything. I'm talking. And they are covering the child. And they are just healing the child. And encouraging the child. That oh my child is smart. Such a parent is a failure. A big, big failure. And a selfish parent. A child who is confident does not mean to be rude so we have to underline i don't have time to talk much about this today but don't forget teaching your child boundaries minding your business my kids a lot of people think they don't talk some people if they get to you they won't talk because over the time i've taught them the importance of minding your business they can be with you and quiet and they can be with you and they talk and you'll be tired because they know that oh this is the part of the family now I can share my point. Some people say your children don't talk at all. We come to your house, they're not playing with us. They already learn how to mind their business. Boundaries is key. Know where to talk, know where to play and everything. And still encourage them to fulfill who they are. See, we don't have a lot of time. I really need to stop. I am so sorry. I took, oh my God, extra 16 minutes already. Uh, I don't mean to take a lot of your time, but I believe it's not a waste of time for you. Boundaries, yes, yes, yes. Boundaries. I am Faith Fatima. Boundaries, boundaries, yes, yes. 
Boundaries is key. Boundaries is key. And I know you have done a good job also. Because your son will see some people and not talk and see some people and talk. It's about boundaries. Let them know where to talk and where not to talk. We have to keep quiet and where to talk. However, don't overdo it in the name of positive parenting. Keep quiet. No. Especially when they are talking to you, let them speak their mind. See, encourage them to speak like an adult. Give them critical thinking. Let them say their view. What do you think about this thing? As a family, we are going to do this. What, what's your view? They'll grow fast. They'll be able to think critically. I'm, I'm really have to, I really have to stop right now. I really have to stop right now. I want to say thank you for joining me today. Thank you. There's something that I put down that I've not said and it's very important. I said a little bit, but I did emphasize. It's you following through with your consequences. If you don't listen to me now, I am going to take your iPad and I won't give it to you in two days. But your child did not listen. Don't repeat it. Take the iPad and don't give to the child in two days. No matter who is begging you. Not even your wife or your husband. Not even the aunties. No, please. See, a lot of people are spoiling your parenting skills in the name of family. Destroying their future because of friendship. I've said it before. Friends can walk away. Family can walk away. But your growing glory is more important. You don't want your children to walk away. We are talking about their future. We are talking about raising, raising future leaders. Outstanding people. Voice that is going to help this generation. Go through. If you don't go through with your consequences, it means your words are garbage, not gold. That is why most of the time I don't like to in a hurry say something because I feel pitied for them. Because if I say it, oh, they know even they, this day they, they will not even cry. We are in for this. Go through with your consequences. I'm not talking about, see, there is difference between punishment and discipline. I had a discussion about that last year with my friend, Pastor Rachel. I believe she's here and she's going to be joining us soon, soon again, one of these days, one of this Saturday in February. I'll be bringing her on board again, Pastor Rachel, uh, Pastor Rachel, my darling friend. I think I did, that was a topic I had with her last year. Discipline or punishment, right? We had a lot of discussion on that. Are you doing discipline or punishment? We don't have time. I can't go in depth. But it's very important for you to go through with your consequences. Don't let your word be garbage. Let your words be gold. No empty truth. If I call you one more time and you don't respond quickly, after you have checked, there is no wax. After you have checked, there is clear direction. After you have checked, there is the instruction is age appropriate. I'm going to switch off the TV for two days. Please go ahead, switch off. Sometimes I tell parents, it might take you to go into your bedroom and cry. Because you can't hold it. You feel the pain for them. But don't forget, it's about their future. Go and cry in your room. Don't let them see you. It's okay to cry as parent. And sometimes you need to take a moment and pat yourself at the back and say, Oh, well done, Oye. I've done this. When you see the fruit of your effort and the labor by the grace of God in the life of your children, you pat yourself at the back and say, Hey, by the grace of God, I've done a good job. So thank you all for joining me today. You have to go through with the consequences. Yes, yes, yes. Mrs. Justice, yes. You have to go through with the consequences. You see, this is a very important thing. A lot of us don't go through with it. Because you feel pitied. And you know that our children, they can press the button. They, they Emotional blackmail. Mommy, I'm sorry. I promise not to do that again. I promise, mommy. Ah, that's just pressing your button. It's an emotional black, black man. And most of the time, if they are doing this every time, and they know when they come to you with that crocodile tears, you're going to fall for it. That's it. Your words are already garbage. The end. Garbage words. They won't listen anymore. They know by the time I do this, I'll just go to her, go on my knees. You, and you know, with a lot of toasting, they're hating you. You are the best mommy in the world. You are the best I could ask for. I promise I will never do this again. Keep your pledge. I have forgiven you, my sweetheart. Thank you. I know I'm the best mommy. And you are also the best daughter. You are the best daughter. And please don't do that again. But for now, I'm taking this iPad. 
for now this ipad will still be with me i know you will not do it again come on give me a cuddle don't forget you are not upset with the child you are upset with the action of the child thank you so much for joining me today from instagram from facebook i'm so delighted i'm so happy you're joining and i believe you've learned one or two things about what to do when your child is not listening don't forget my name is oye i am oye Layo, your parenting coach this video also will be available on our youtube channel the vision guide if you have not subscribed to your youtube channel sincerely i don't know what you're waiting for it's up to you subscribe and shift the notification bell so that you get notified anytime we drop new videos this year i promise i'm gonna be bringing more of uh, uh family life real life stories and things like keeping it real i pray god is gonna help me but I just want to say thank you for joining Sister Toyin. I can see you here, Sister Toyin. You come. Thank you, my sister, for joining me. She's right there on Facebook. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless you. 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 Thank you once again, everybody. Don't forget, as parents, your words must be good, not garbage. Follow through with your consequences. Ensure there is clear direction. Ensure the instruction is age appropriate. Ensure there is no wax blocking your child's hearing after that you've done all you can you follow through with the consequences yet your child is not listening you suspect there's something wrong your child i'm not praying for that because no prayer want to hear my child is on the spectrum see i've done a lot of research i've studied what is autism i've i've done try by the grace of god to do a lot of certification on these and things like that and i've come to realize if you break it down every human being is having something one thing one thing is there and that does not make us be uh, disabled or abnormal those who are close to me they will know i've shared it over and again the things i suffered growing up that i didn't even realize this is a disability until now that i'm getting to know more about those things if your child needs help don't wait one day a day waiting might be ever might bring about everlasting destruction check with an expert check with a specialist let them evaluate your child if you feel your child is having speech delay or movement delay or whatever it is social interaction is not there eye contact is not there do your part do your part at home if you have done your part over and again and you see there is no result you have people that can help around who knows about these things and they have tried please take the child for evaluation one day delay might be a problem thank you once again for joining me i am myself my beautiful self oh yeah liar is my name and oh yeah for short and i will definitely see you next week same time same place god bless you god bless you god bless you thank you for joining thank you mrs amado thank you for joining faith fatima thank you for joining on instagram we have valority money in castronic boss paul bless yem coco sherry jennifer uh, sema, sema. Thank you for joining Sherry Jennifer again. Okay, OJ1 God Oba Wemi Oba 29. Thank you for joining Lizzie. Thank you for joining Adeni Adeni Ditolu. Thank you for joining. I wish I can call everybody's name Queen Olaju Moke 06. Thank you for joining Damin Daniels. Thank you for joining. If I can't call your name, please, I say thank you for joining. I am Toloops. Thank you for joining. Tolu for saying thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. On Facebook, uh, Miss, Miss Dockers, thank you for joining. Uh, Statoin. Mrs. Shomade, thank you for joining. Mrs. Pasca, thank you for joining. My sister, once again, thank you for joining. Uh, I can't see everyone. Miss Remy, thank you for joining. Yetunde, thank you for joining. Fisayo, thank you for joining everybody thank you for joining i love you all i am not taking your time for granted and i'm not taking you joining me for granted and i will see you again next week bye for now